Hello, I have a really cool portfolio website for us to review together today, as well as an even more impressive flagship project. So if you're looking for inspiration for your portfolio or for some e-learning projects you're working on, then you are definitely in the right place. So um, this portfolio belongs to Raul Fajardo, who I met when he joined the bootcamp. So I was able to work with him and see this website come to life, and it helped him land a really good instructional design role at Amazon Web Services. And what we're going to see is just like we saw in the last portfolio review I, video I did with Kristen, Raul has one project on this portfolio website um, and he was able to get some really good interviews and accept a really good offer. So I'm telling you, one project portfolios may or may not be the future here. Um, they've been proving really effective and this is what I've been kind of recommending. So we'll take a look at another one and obviously we'll get into more detail about what makes that project so effective. So let's take a look here. So here is Raul's homepage. We have this um, nice big hero section here. Hi, I'm, I'm Raul. Nice hierarchy. Notice this part is a lot bigger and bolder than the subtitle. And then we have that value proposition. Raul designs and develops learning experiences to help solve business problems. Notice what Raul didn't do here. Raul didn't include like a high resolution professional like headshot or, or image of himself in the hero section, which I usually do recommend. And I think a reason why he didn't do that or why this is so effective without that is because he incorporates illustrations of himself throughout the website. So notice we have the, um, you know, just the logo over here is an illustration of Raul, as well as the fav icon, which you may not be able to, to see it super clearly, but this is a nice touch if you can include the fav icon up there with something related to your branding or your logo. And you could just look up a tutorial how to do that. It's F-A-V-I-C-O-N. I mean, this one was built with Squarespace. So again, in a lot of these um, portfolios you're seeing coming out of the bootcamp, people are getting these sites online nice and quickly using Squarespace. So as we scroll down, it leads us right into this featured project, which is the only project on Raul's site right now. And you're going to love this one. So we will definitely take a look at it together. Um, nothing new here. If you've been watching these e-learning portfolio reviews, you'll see social proof is very powerful on portfolio websites. So Raul includes these testimonials from people who can speak to his skills. You know, I worked with him in the boot camp. He said he included testimonials from people who have worked with him at previous jobs he's held. So a really good idea to do that on your portfolio site if you're looking for new opportunities. And then uh, this is a really good footer to have too. You'll notice Raul has something like this on every page asking if you're looking to hire an instructional designer and e-learning developer and then a call to action to bring him bring you to the contact page. So part of the reason why this is so good, it's, it's for a couple of reasons. But one is Raul is very, very clear about what he's looking for here. He's not saying, oh, I'm open to opportunities. He's, he's basically saying I'm looking for a full time opportunity. And Raul hasn't updated this yet. Uh, he told me when I asked if I could do this video, he's like, oh, I need to now that I'm like working at Amazon. But I was like, maybe hold off just so we could see what helped you actually get hired. And I think being really clear and upfront about what you're trying to do is a really effective way to, you know, send that message to potential employers and recruiters. And then we have this nice footer down here based in Southern California. We have the email address and a link to the LinkedIn profile. So Pretty simple home page. Notice it's nothing super fancy here, but the alignment is really nice. Um, the colors are nice. The font is nice. He has good hierarchy here. So, so nice and simple. We don't need anything super out there fancy. It's just a good use of typography, color, spacing, and alignment on this page. If we head over to the about me, once again, great hierarchy and typography here. We have the name, we have a, a tagline here, and then we have a nice friendly, um, body copy or paragraph letting us know more about who Raul is. Notice it's very inviting. Hi there with an emoji. So it's it's an eye. It's very personal. Um, by the end of it, we feel like we know Raul a bit better. He even talks about what he likes to do outside of work. Um, and that is a nice touch to include. Uh, just more opportunities for people to connect with you. I think the only suggestion I would have on this page is, yeah, this is a great, um, a great illustration. But notice the character is kind of facing like off of the screen towards the scroll bar. If we could reflect this and have the character face the text to direct our eyes to whatever the character is looking at, that would be a nice touch. And that is a common phenomenon. If we have like characters on websites or in, in visuals and they're looking at something, uh, we generally follow their gaze. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, minor detail, but this would probably, probably be just 
slightly more impactful if the character is facing the text, but very, very minor. And then we scroll down and we can learn more about Ra Raul's education, skills, and um, toolkit. So the, the technology that Raul's familiar with. Um, I think, and then the only feedback here is these pieces can start to like blend together a little bit. So I may suggest um, using some of this hierarchy Raul uses on these other places where you have that really big bold text, slightly less big um, subtitle, and then like that much smaller, less bold body copy. We could probably incorporate that with like, you know, the education with the degree name and the actual like school. Um, and then we could probably incorporate probably have more of a horizontal layout here. We have a lot of space over here that isn't being used. And when I scroll, um, these start, yeah, they start all starting to look the same. Another possible way it will take a bit more time, but an another thing we could do is incorporate icons with each of these different skills, like visual design. Maybe we could have like a computer screen with an art project on it. Um, storyboarding, maybe we could have like a pen icon and maybe we could organize those in like a grid, like a two, like a grid with two rows with like a icon associated with one of these um, text labels. Obviously that would take more time. I know Raul, um, yeah, wanted to get something effective online quickly. So that's a minor detail. This is still a really strong, effective about page without those updates. So very, very nice. We have the nav bar up here in the top that we can use as well. But notice, even if we scroll to the bottom of the page, Raul is always sending us to that let's chat page. Let's create great learning experiences together. And then he has a form and some other contact information for us to contact him. Another thing I haven't really been calling attention to, but that is a really nice touch is notice the animations. So nice animations as we scroll down the page, things are nicely, subtly animating in as we scroll. So minor details like this can go a long way with how polished and professional the, um, the website feels. So, so there we go, the portfolio page. Again, we only have this, this single project, so we could just access this from the home page, but it does give Raul more room to grow if you ever did want to include more projects on here um, in the future. And again, that footer always sending us to that Let's Chat page. Um, really good way to not have someone like stuck at the bottom of a page and not know where to go next. We always want to direct them somewhere intentional. Okay, so when we do go to learn more about this project, um, you're in for a treat with this project if you haven't experienced it yet. So it's all about how to lead effective one-on-ones and give good feedback in the workplace. So um, if you haven't seen these, these uh, write-ups before, again, this is a really important part of the project where we can talk about who our audience is, which in this case, they are lead project managers, about the responsibilities we had, how, whoa, the responsibilities we held as the instructional designer and the tools that we used. So you can imagine if you're a hiring manager, a potential client who needs some of these skills, this will be a really good look if they see that you've used those skills on this project they're about to experience for themselves. Um, and and I, I've recorded a whole video on these write-ups. You've probably seen me talk about them in these other e-learning portfolio reviews, so we're not going to spend very much time on this. But I, if I just scroll down, I just want to show you how nice the alignment is here. So really strong left alignment. Um, he, he guides us through each of these deliverables that he created to lead to the final project. And he took time to like, like, look at how nice this is presented. So he even took time to present these um, screenshots very nicely, even though the actual working file might have been a little bit uh, messier along the way. So, and then he shows off the programming too. So we can see like how many triggers are included on some of these slides. You can tell from that scroll bar there, this is some pretty intense programming. And this, this screen right here is one of my favorite parts of this project. And we are going to get into why. So there we have it, really high quality, crisp, crisp screenshots. They're nice and full screen, so they match the width of the um, text containers, which is really good for alignment purposes. Um, and then he even says, you know, if I if I were to spend more time on this, I would add XAPI tracking to see, um, yeah, how people are engaging with this. So that's a nice touch too to show, like if if given the opportunity, I could make this like even better. And then we're led to experience the project, which is what we will do together right now. So here we go. We're going to restart this. And here we go. Very nice, like balance with this box, you know, nice centered alignment here. So it's very, very intentional. And you'll see like every choice here feels so intentional. Notice when we hover over this, you know, nice subtle hover effect. And here we go. We're diving right into the scenario. This uses Vyond. So, um, 
you've you're probably seeing more and more of these Beyond Plus storyline projects. And I just want to like highlight that because they are doing really well on portfolios right now. So Beyond is this like animated video creator. Um, it makes it really easy to source assets and build out these animations. And then you can use them in storyline to create these like interactive video experiences, which I think are really wowing, um, wowing people right now. So let's dive back into it. So that is the scenario. I want to refresh this really quickly and show you one minor, minor piece of feedback. Notice we have these cars moving. A common mistake that we do see when people use Vyond like this is we want to be focusing on the text, but we might have some animation happening in the background that's pulling our, our eyes away from the text. So a minor suggestion here would be to maybe pause that animation a little bit sooner, but it still is a cool effect. So it's a little trade off to make. It makes you feel the, the scene feel very alive and immersive. But here we go, we're a lead project manager. We want to have a successful meeting with our direct report. So we need to make the right decisions. And then at the end of the scenario, we'll get some feedback. So there we go, now we're meeting Sam. Sam is basically our, our mentor character who's gonna give us like help throughout the project. If you've seen my flagship project or effective e-learning videos, this is probably familiar to you, but um, yeah, Sam lets us know if we're ever feeling stuck, Sam will be here to help. And then we can click on that button whenever we're stuck and Sam will help us. So cool use of background music. It's definitely setting the stage. And this is us right here. So this, we're like the main character. So we're pulling into work, hopping into the office. So really nice, nice way to immerse us in the scene here. So there we have it. Very cool little like animation sequence, like nice background music to get us like a little excited, grab our attention about what's to come. Um, and I wanna just make a quick comment, like we are going to be this character throughout. So if we look at this, this character is us. Um, this is always a little tricky to navigate because when we say like you do this, you do that, mostly we recommend like showing us what's happening through like the person's eyes. So we're just like seeing a computer screen instead of seeing a character who's representing us. Um, Raul and I had this conversation and yeah, Raul decided to, to go this route and I think it, it works well here. Um, but we do run the risk of people like not really identifying with that character or being confused like, wait, this isn't me. I didn't get to have any say in who my character was or what they looked like. Um, so there are a few ways to like deal with that, but let, let me know what you think in the comments about this design choice with showing you as this um, character on the screen, but minor detail possibly, let me know what you think in the comments. But okay, so we got into the office, we're ready to tackle the day, so we schedule a one-on-one -on -one with, um, with our direct report. Sound effects keep us immersed, nice animation here, we can see we're sending an email. The, um, the background ambient noise is a bit loud at this part. I would probably reduce the volume on that a bit. But minor detail. Sound effects are tricky because they they can become too loud. <laughs> um, and we don't know what volume people will be listening to it at. But there we go. So Dan, David has accepted the invitation. So now we're looking around the office. What can we do before David arrives so that he's comfortable in the one-on-one -on -one environment? So here we go, we have this scenario-based learning experience. These do really well. We can ask Sam. So, you know, maybe we take a seat and wait, we can log off of our computer, or we can just like put everything away and log out of the computer. Let's talk to Sam and get some help. So, uh, and notice too, like I wanna draw attention to that really nice use of animation here. So, um, yeah, Sam's waving at us and then those animations complete so we can stay focused on the text on the right. Notice if she were still waving, that may be a bit distracting. It may be pulling our attention away from the text. So good combination of animation and still images here. And then, okay, so Sam lets us know choosing the right environment for the one-on-one -on -one is just as important as being in the one-on-one -on -one itself. If there are too many distractions, um, the one-on-one -on -one will not be as successful as we'd like it to be. So this is a great use of the mentor. The mentor isn't saying exactly like this is the right answer, but the mentor is hinting like, make sure you kind of get rid of distractions or it's gonna be a bad time. So we could conclude from that, the right choice will probably be to put all of our belongings away and log out of the computer. But let's just say that we keep, the, keep our phone with us. Let's see what happens. Right, yeah, checking our emails on our way into the meeting. Let's see. Here comes David. 
Nice use of text here to kind of set the scene. And we can see we're getting a text <laughs> or an email. So we definitely did not avoid those distractions. It probably would have been cool to have like a phone vibrating animation or something when that text came in. And, and look at how um, Raul does this. So he said, so yes, what happens next after you make one of these choices? David arrives at the office, the door is closed. You continue to receive text messages and calls how to keep looking down at your phone. So, they, so David notices this. He's wondering if you're too distracted to have the one-on-one. -on -one. So we can see that feedback. Notice this is very clear consequences. We're not saying you made the wrong choice. You didn't get rid of the distractions. Good enough. We're actually saying, that, and we, first we showed what happened with the text bubbles and the phone ringing. And now we're actually saying, yeah, David's wondering if, if you're too distracted to even have the one-on-one. -on -one. David's feeling pretty deprioritized. Um, but the meeting continues. So we go through five questions like this, and I'm not going to go through all of them here because it could take a bit of time and there's nuance to each of them. I definitely suggest you open up this project and try it for yourself. I'll link Raul's um, website in the description, of course, but I wanted to show you this screen. So once you get to the end of this and you, and you, you wrap up the one-on-one, -on -one, you make all of your choices, you get like a, um, an email from like your supervisor and it's like a performance review of how well you did. So you choose to open it and then this is what you see. So this is your feedback. We get to see how we did on each question. Or no, sorry, it's not from your supervisor. I guess it's from, um, it's from the, the direct report we just met with. So very realistic, like instead of just saying, you know, how, and now review how you did, notice that Raul incorporated this like feedback form that we, could, we may actually receive on the job. And then it's really cool too, because if we want to see like, oh, wow, we got this one wrong. We didn't, you know, our direct report did not receive actionable feedback that was clear and specific to their needs. Let's review that one. You know, we can't, this is where we get that very direct and explicit like feedback. You know, it's recommended you give actionable feedback that's clear and specific because you didn't. David felt discouraged and struggled to understand if there w was any concrete feedback for him. And this is just from the answer choices I selected like previously, like just running through it really quickly, but I really wanted to show you this screen. This is what obviously took a lot of programming to get right. We had to see how people respond to each of these choices and then, you know, show them visually and give the option to review it based on our choice. So really well done. Also gives us the option to try again if we want to get it right based on that feedback. Um, and it just is a really good example of how showing people the consequences of their actions in this risk-free environment um, can help them avoid making that same mistake on the job. And that's why we like this scenario based approach so much. So that's the website. That's the project. Definitely get in there and try it for yourself. Um, if you'd like to create a portfolio website like this with my feedback and the help of my team, go ahead and check out idbootcamp.com. Um, and then I have a full e-learning portfolio review series if you want to see more e-learning reviews like this. So check the description and I will see you in the next video.